the castle on Mount uh, St. Michael. You can see how dark it is and how the clouds have gathered, but the crowds are there looking, looking out over there, taking the odd snapshot. And there are some breaks in the cloud to the south. Uh, if they will hurry up, then Patrick might get one of those gaps in Falmouth as they drift across. OK. I think the streetlights are coming on here in Penzance. They're automatic, I imagine, John, aren't they? Yes. Oh, you can see them there, look. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, some come on by timers, but a lot these days come on automatically as their sensors are triggered as they get towards dusk. Uh, and people at home have got to watch out now because their neighbour's security light may very well come on <laughs> on their garage, triggered by the folk across the road's cat or whatever. And this, um, this is our best picture, John, isn't it? This is the picture from, from the Hercules. Yes. Oh, and that's, I'm that's, imagining that's really that it's right hard. over us. Four minutes, just over four minutes, isn't it, uh, uh, to go to totality? Four minutes here, uh, and they are a little bit further west from uh, us, so they will west. get a bit earlier. So a bit, a bit ahead of us, in fact. A bit ahead of us. Uh, and this, I think, is Alderney, and uh, and Jamie Thigston's under that one in Alderney. Jamie, you there? Yes, Michael, um, uh, we're here in Alderney. As you can see, we've got a great view here. There's a little bit of uh, light cloud uh, just blowing over us here. It's actually be become remarkably cold. Um, I'm joined, of course, by uh, Dr. Chris Riley, BBC astronomer. Uh, Chris, it's, it's getting quite eerie now here. It is really eerie, Jamie. We've both got our coats on. There's a chill descended in the air. There's only a few percent of the sun left, and it's just tantalizingly visible through a gap in the clouds right above our heads here. But the wind, I swear, has changed direction. I know Patrick doesn't believe this, but <laughs> I think it has. And we've got, uh, um, uh, there's a gannet colony, of course, not far away from here. There were a lot of birds around earlier. They seem to have cleared. I is that a, a sense that it's getting darker? Certainly, there seems to be a kind of hush that's descending over nature here as well. As, l as the Although the wind has got up, everything else is pretty silent, really. So it's getting kind of spooky. And the cloud cover, seem, I mean, it's extraordinary now. It, I've no, I don't think I've ever seen clouds like this before. I mean, it's broken cloud, but it seems to be illuminated around the edges. It's a real kind of mackerel sky, I think it's called, where you've got these kind of patches around the clouds that are illuminated, as you say. And as the temperature drops further, these clouds should shrink both in height and in width. So it might just clear up. And that gap that we can see the eclipse through now might just stay with us over totality. Right, well, let's keep our fingers crossed. I know they've got 2 minutes 47 now until totality in uh, Cornwall. Uh, does that mean how long until we get totality here? About 7 minutes 40 for us here. So uh, we'll be about um, 5 minutes behind totality in Penzance with Michael. Right, a uh, real sense of excitement uh, building here, Michael, but let's hand back to Cornwall. <laughs> oh, two minutes 24, John, now to totality, it really dark outside. And it this is, is the really Isles of Scilly. Now, if we've got two minutes and 17 seconds they've only got just over a minute haven't they until totality uh, they've got just over a minute about a minute and 10 seconds from now and we can see the crescent has thinned now it's very very thin we can see the horns here are now beginning to draw in and this is when your hands sweat the <laughs> hairs on the back of your neck really get tense here are the horns drawing in now and then we're going to see this fade all the way down to a single point of light I don't think we're going to get a very spectacular show of Bailey's beads as we go into totality. We'll come back to that in a minute, John, but just here, look how dark it's got outside here. Isn't it at absolutely wonderful? <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> it turns you on, does it, John? It really does. Oh, we just lost the picture there. Uh, but uh, if we can get that back, then we'll see a plunge into totality in the sillies in about 30 seconds. Oh, right. If we can get that back. Have you still... Can we still see the Silly Islands because we've got about 30 seconds to totality? We've got reckon? about 15 seconds now. 15 seconds? And so we've got 10 we seconds Look, to go. In the, here we are, single point of light, breaks into a couple of beads, disappears. Now they'll be able to see the corona uh, if they can't see it through the clouds. We're coming up well, here. Now we've Here's got the Hercules, John, so... OK. And they're about where we are, so what are we doing? We're about a minute away? We've got a bit less than a minute, I think, uh, to go. Uh, they're a bit to the west of us, and again we can see things thinning and the horns drawing in. Great shouting going on outside here, and at the Radio 1 outing now. Absolutely. Um, hope nobody gets dazzled by all the flashes that go off. <laughs> 
tremendous. Uh, and here's the Hercules. Here's again. the Hercules again. We can see the uh, the horns drawing in again, coming down to a single point light about 30 seconds or so to go here. People are yelling. Now it is dark. Out, so see that you mean. the horizon yeah. to the south is still bright. We're looking out of the zone of totality there. Looks like a huge end of the world experience to the west. Still light towards Patrick in Falmouth. Isn't this absolutely wonderful? Now you're convinced this is what people come for. It's extraordinary out here. Here from the Hercules, we're beginning to see little beads forming at the end of the arc here as the last bit of sun is disappearing behind the moon. It's all breaking up now into this final point of light. Do you see what I mean about the gloom descending? This is quite extraordinary. Look at the atmosphere out now, there. Now, here we've got a fascinating picture. Here's the sun disappearing. Here are some Bailey's oh, beads. Yeah. And there is totality. We begin to see some prominences around the sun here. And leave aside all the atmosphere and the height. This is what the scientists are looking at as well, isn't this it? This is really wonderful. Now we've got midnight outside. Midnight at midday. But now just a little bit of light on the far horizon. Here's the corona now. This wonderful structure of the sun's atmosphere being twisted and contorted and heated by the sun's magnetic field up to several million degrees. The only time you can see it by eye. So this is the time when you can actually see what the sun does. Absolutely. I spent 30 years studying this outer atmosphere of the sun for me. Ah. <laughs> Completely eerie sign. Well, it's totally dark outside here, apart from just a f bit of light on the far horizon, which is outside the zone of totality, isn't it? Yes. That's because the total zone is so narrow, yeah. we're looking out of the zone of totality. Now we're beginning to see the lightning in the west as uh, the total shadow is now passing over us. Uh, we've got two or three more seconds to go here. The totality is now essentially over here. Daylight returns. And it is. That's extraordinary, isn't it? You can see... You can see, actually, on the... On the Hercules picture, you can see the light coming. Here, you can see it, actually, on, on the horizon. Absolutely. And now, if we look to the east, we can see the shadow moving away. Uh, Patrick is probably about to come out of the shadow in Falmouth in about five seconds or so. And then uh, the shadow is still heading eastwards. Uh, totality this is the diamond ring, isn't it? This is the diamond ring coming out. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. The most precious, the most elusive diamond <laughs> that you will ever see. <laughs> Now we're back uh, with the filtered camera here, and now we can see the arc of the sun returning. Those were incredible pictures from the plane. Did it do as much for you as it normally does, John, despite all the, all the clouds? Even, unfortunately, seeing it uh, here on the monitor, well, you can see I'm still smiling. This has been absolutely <laughs> super. <laughs> And now the shadow's heading off yeah. over the channel. It's heading towards Patrick Moore, isn't it? It's left Patrick. It's now heading towards Alderney. They've got about uh, a minute and a bit to go before well, let's totality. Uh, uh, hang on Alderney. a second, John. Let's see if we can if we can see Patrick Moore. We can we can see how he reacted. Patrick, Patrick, um, did you enjoy that? Well, in a way, I did. It was an eerie experience, and clearly, the aircraft showed that there was a marvelous corona. But was down here, unfortunately and entry head, we were under total cloud. The drop in the light level was quite amazing, more than I'd ever known before, and the rise at the end, when the shadow at the end, it was equally, equally marked. But it was a strange, weird experience, one that I'm, in a way, glad to have been through, but very sorry we didn't see what was quite clearly a magnificent solar corona. But you'll tie that up in our Sky at Night program later on, but at the present moment, I fear that we have to say that from here, we didn't see the corona, but we did have a strange experience, and one that 